Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about pre-ordering a maquette. Should you do it? The answer is no. But I wanted to give a little bit more of proof of why pre-orders are generally very bad. At this current time, the prices are very unstable. As you can see from Nissa going down $20, that's over half. Ronis went down $8 about 42%. Uh, Visor went down $7. Angel of Sanctions went down 53%. And if you are a rare as a pre-order, you can expect to lose a ton, a ton of prices. So when we talk about uh, pre-ordering and we talk about the prices of these cards, it's so much variance right now and the variance is up and down up and down it's hard to get a good understanding of what the actual price is so we have Gideon of the trials at 28 dollars. we have nissa at 18 and liliana at 16. i will review all three planeswalkers since they are the most expensive cards in the set towards the end of this video but as a general what the what is going on with these cards, this will probably, for the large majority of cards on this screen and in the next few screens, this will be the highest point that they will ever be in their entire existence. So when you talk about pre-ordering, pre-order if you really want to play a card during the first week of FNM. Other than that, there's no utility in it. And this goes without saying, if you are trading for these cards at pre-release, what you're actually doing is you're trading for them at the pre-order prices still. And that is why a lot of local stores, that's why a lot of local distributors and even some YouTubers can open product early because they can get these inflated prices. So you want to be the one who opens the Planeswalker and trades it away. You definitely do not want to be the person trading for the Planeswalker. Right? That's not going to uh, be great. So we take a look at some of the, the rares. Um, again, unless you get the product a week early or a few days early and you can crack it all open and then you can have it on eBay and you're the only seller and even at that point demand is extremely high, supply is supposedly zero, but we all know how this game works where people open boxes early. If I can get boxes a few days early, then imagine what a store or distributor can do. And one of the questions I get a lot is my store doesn't seem to have the right amount of prizes, prize support. Maybe it's because your store opened the prize support. I mean, that's the most logical conclusion that a store owner who is desperate on money will open the boxes they are given for free and then put them on eBay for the maximal price. You're never going to get these prices again for the majority of these cards, especially at the lower end, the lower tier. So when we talk about Glory Bringer, we talk about Pull from Tomorrow. They're at the highest point. I mean, unless there is a deck that perfectly fits the meta for them, it's not going to really be higher for 95% of these cards. This is it. So especially even the uncommons and commons, you can sell them if you're the only one selling them. But if everyone else has them and there's so much supply of it, then you are going to have a difficulty selling them and your chance of profitability is near zero. So again, pre-orders are bad. You don't want to pre-order singles. You may or may not want to pre-order a box or a case depending on how you like the set. If you really like the set, then I don't feel like pre-ordering a case is beyond. The set is not that bad. It's not Dragon Maze. But in my opinion, uh, we have the masterpieces, we have these Chase Planeswalkers, and this is, I mean, it's got to be one of the first times that all three of the most valuable cards in the set, or all three Planeswalkers are the most free, the most valuable cards in the set. I know sometimes it's one or two, but now the fact that they pushed the Planeswalkers as far as they could push them, it tells you where uh, they want the, they want the money to be at the Planeswalkers. So let's 
take a look at Gideon. Gideon is the strongest planeswalker. He's at $28. Is he worth buying at $28? The answer is no. Uh, his all-time high was $43, $44 before losing half his value. And the reason that you should not buy Gideon at this point is even Gideon, Ally of Zendikar, I can't imagine a better planeswalker than Gideon, Ally of Zendikar. I can't imagine this is better than that. And he's still, he's always around $20. And it's just the supply. The supply is so high. So unless you open, if you open one in pre-release, you got to get rid of it. If you open one because you bought, you open boxes early, you will definitely sell them. So behavior is the same no matter what. Uh, the behavior of a store, the maximal value you can get of your cards, should you get a chase card at pre-release, is normally at pre-release. There are exceptions like Elspeth, Sun's Champion, uh, Archangel, and uh, Voice of Resurgence, but they are not, I mean, 95% of these cards will go down, and then they'll go slightly up. Some of them, not all of them, will go slightly up during the Pro Tour, I'm a cat. However, getting at $28 seems like a lot. Now let's talk about Nissa at 18. She began at $36 before just, uh, I mean, if this is not a clear, if these planeswalkers are not a clear example of why when a card releases, you should not buy the first copy you see, then I don't know what is. Now, reversely, if you are opening these products early, then this is very good for you because you can sell it uh, it's actually a business model that my friend asked me to explore with him that since he does get his boxes early uh, should he open them all and just put them online i said nah dude you need a player base but he doesn't even have a player base so it's interesting because every store i would say every store has at least considered it because the profit margins are so high in the beginning anissa is 18 dollars today she was $36, $37 yesterday, and who knows where she will be up be when people are just cracking packs like crazy for the masterpieces. Now, when we talk about Nissa, I think this is my favorite of the Planeswalkers, but 18 is still too much. I mean, these pre-order prices are just beyond me, but you know why it's 18? It's because people are buying at 18. Do you know why it used to be 36? Because people are buying at 36. And then we talked about Lily, at 28 at the highest, and now she is at the lowest she's ever been at 16. So is he worth 16? Probably not. I mean, when you look at the Planeswalkers right now, especially the ones in Kaladas, to see where the prices are, uh, Johnny is four bucks. Sahili has gone down again. She's, I think, sub 10 now. Um, I mean, she's it was a nice, and then Nissa, the original Nissa. I, I mean, that's just that card just never went up. It just tanked. The problem is uh, with these planeswalkers, in my opinion, a too much of this stuff is going to get open, like it always does, and b they're not, in my opinion, modern playable. And if they're not modern playable, maybe not this week, maybe not next week, but some point in time, especially during rotation. They will take a hit. Every Planeswalker takes a massive hit unless they are, are modern playable or ca super casually appealing. I'm not just tiny bit. All Planeswalkers have casual appeal, but I'm talking about, hey, it's in every deck of this color, we play this Planeswalker. And there's only a few of those Planeswalkers, like JC Mind Sculptor, it's going to be in every blue EDH deck. Um, and these are not it. So overall, th this is why you don't pre order. The prices are extremely volatile, but they're always volatile going down. And if you can convince your store, if your store is selling these singles earlier than they should be, and they're cracking boxes earlier than they should be, you should not buy those singles, right? So there's two things, do not pre-order, and then do not buy er early singles, even if they are slightly discounted, because at the end of the day, these cards are not, you want there to be more supply before it balances to its actual price. And yes, there will be one card in this set that just goes up a ton in money, but that's one card out of the entire set or one or two cards in the entire set, right? It's not gonna be every card, 95% of these cards, this will be probably the highest point, especially on commons and commons. Fatal Plus was 
really the exception that kind of took me by surprise, uh, being that it's Fatal Puss. But anyway, leave me a comment below if you guys agree or disagree or what cards that you would actually pre-order on. Again, you have to be very, very good to pick a pre-order and actually have it go up in price. You have to be, I have done it. I've done it three times in a row. I've done it with Voice, uh, Elspeth, Archangel. I can tell you the research involved in those was just the play testing was horrendous. And I, all three of those cards I looked at in terms of power level, in terms of what the price, current price was, and then what would happen if the card was played. And what deck would want it? And is that deck in the map? The one, pro the one problem with any speculation and pre-order, you don't know what the meta will be. You just don't know until the pro tour because they're pros. Anyway, that's it. Bye, guys.